All right, so now we're gonna go through the, the, the main sweep, what I call the ball and chain sweep. And this is gonna be the core of, of the whole instructional. Of course, we're gonna be doing other things, but this is what I'm always looking for. I'm always trying to get back to this. And if I engage somebody in the De La Hiva, and they just kind of sit there like a deer in the headlights, I'm gonna go for this right away. And if they start moving around, but they don't do what they need to do to stop me from doing that, I'm gonna get there. If they do something that's gonna stop me from getting there, I'm gonna address it and try to go back to there. I'm always looking to set this up no matter what. This is the core sweep for, for me, uh, for De La Hiva. And, and, and what it is is this. I call it the ball and chain sweep. There's a lot of names for, for uh, in jiu-jitsu. Some techniques don't have names. Some techniques have like five or six different names. This is just what I use in my personal notes to, to, uh, so I can remember it in kind of my own shorthand. So you can use that name, the ball and chain, the ball and chain or you can, you can make up your own name, whatever you want to do. You can call it the Stefan sweep if you want to, it doesn't matter. So I'm in that De La Hiba position. We talked about earlier, here I am. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed this sleeve in between his legs, which sometimes seems like something's really, really difficult, but if you put, if you put some time into it, it's actually very, very usable, and you see this a lot at high-level competition. So once I'm here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push with this leg and make Stefan take a big step back. As, he start, as I do that, look, I'm gonna pull myself with this sleeve and also just follow him. So as I start to push, I'm pulling and I'm following, and look, this hook is gonna drop to the floor as I sit up. Let's turn this way so you can see that. When this hook drops down, it's not gonna be out here. I'm gonna drop here so I still have some control over your leg. I don't want you running away from me. So if we just look at that action really quick, as I push, I'm following him all the time, using this to help me out. So as I push, I'm sitting up and that's falling. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to sit as close as I need to. What I don't want him to do is for you to step this leg out or for you to pummel under this arm. Yeah, that's gonna be bad as well. So I need to be incredibly tight to you here. All right, Let me turn this way. Once I sit up, I want to try and keep this foot connected. It, it can come off, but I would rather it be there because it's gonna control him just moving so easily. So I'm real tight here. I have this grip. Now I'm gonna take this grip and I'm just gonna feed it to my other hand. I don't let go until this hand is secure. And then when I, I, when I let go, this hand is gonna go to the cross collar. There's a lot of different grips we can use. I can go here, I can go here, I can go over his shoulder. It kind of depends on one, what he gives you, and two, what you're looking for. I generally will go here. I think it's an, an easy grip to, to get, and I'm controlling both of his shoulders. So this grip is gonna kinda control this shoulder, and then this one is gonna control the other. Okay, so there's, there's a, a debate on what, what, what's the best. For me, this is the best, okay? Once I get the guy here, I'm gonna pull the collar down, and I'm pulling his sleeve in between his legs, and I'm kicking his leg out. You gotta be a little careful, particularly with your training partners. He's gonna fall hard either on his shoulder or on his face. So you gotta be a little bit uh, respectful to your training partners. So as I do all those actions, he's gonna fall down, bam. And now all I need to do is correct my position. My foot's on the ground, my elbow's on the ground, I have my grips. I'm just gonna sit up and be right here. One thing I, I really wanna emphasize, and we'll, we'll see this throughout the project, is that once I get my grips, I don't want to let go, unless I absolutely have to. You know, once I get those grips, I want to follow my, my partner or my enemy. I want to follow him around until I can sweep him, I can submit him, 
And once I, if I sweep them, I want to continue and I want to pass. If I submit them, of course, the match is over. But once I get those grips, if that initial sweep doesn't work, I'm not going to let go and just start over something else. I'm going to use those grips to try to set up a different sweep. Mm -hmm. So it's all about getting those grips and then just making him make a mistake or getting so much depth in the position, so much skill in this position that no matter what he does, whether even if it's the right thing, my experience, my knowledge of the position is going to overwhelm him and I'm still going to be able to get something, whether it's that initial sweep we just did or it's one we're going to get into later. Okay, so let's take a look again. I really can't emphasize enough how important it is to follow your partner up. It's not like this. I'm going to stretch the guy really hard, and then now I'm going to try to sit up. That's just an ab exercise, and it's a lot easier for you to stop. If I just stretch you away, and then I try to sit up, you can just put your hand, bam, like that. Okay, palm heel strike. He's going to take me out there. Five okay. point palm exploding heart technique. Exactly. Luckily, that was only one point, so I get you got to make four before I die. And I'm going to trust that you don't do that. But if I push and I follow you, so if, if I move this foot an inch, I would have to move an inch. If I moved it all the way back, I got to sit all the way up. So it, it's a very smooth action. It's going to take some practice, but with repetition, it's going to become very comfortable. So when I'm here, I'm going to stretch. Okay, this hand stays, this leg drops. I'm always gonna pull with this sleeve and I'm gonna hug his leg. Boom, so I'm really tight, changing that sleeve off. Okay, the grip that I use is what I call a spider guard grip. So I'm gonna just turn his sleeve inside out, pass it over. I'm not gonna throw it. I'm not gonna reach for the collar before I get that grip. I'm gonna make sure that that grip is secure and then I'm gonna go to the collar and now I'm gonna pull him down, I'm gonna pull his arm through his legs, and I'm pushing his leg out so he doesn't have a lot of base. Boom, he falls, I step up, and I'm ready to continue here. This is, I would say, one of the best examples of a principle I call the table principle. Um, I, <laughs> I, I, I tell my students this sometimes, and, Sometimes they laugh and sometimes they don't laugh. But uh, have you ever tried to trip a friend of yours as a joke? Sure. Sure, you try to trip him. It's kind of easy. He's walking on two legs. You take one of them out. He doesn't have anywhere to go. He falls down. Now, <laughs> have you ever tried to trip your dog? Four legs. Okay, I I've tried to do this. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not sadistic. I, don't, uh, I, I love my dog. But sometimes I'll try to do some judo or some jiu-jitsu on my dog and I'll try to trip him. He never falls down, okay? Because he's got four legs, if you take one away, it's a lot harder to make him fall. However, I figured this out, okay? He will fall if you push him in the specific direction that you take away the leg that he has, okay? And I really didn't learn this by tripping my dog. I learned this uh, a, a long time ago in this, this table principle. But I put it to, when I learned the table principle, and then I started tripping my dog, then I kind of like, oh man, that's how it really works. I understood how it worked a little bit better. So what I'm saying is if, if you can like do a quad pod for me, Stefan, if you put this hand behind your back, okay, if I push you this way, you're not gonna fall. You have two bases there. If I push you this way, you're not gonna fall. Even if I push you directly to the side, your leg is still there, you're not gonna fall. The only way that you're guaranteed to fall is if I take you at this angle. So I have to take you that angle right there, you have to fall. Nothing. There's no, there's no way you can stop it. Yeah. So you were just like this, right? So let's take a look at the sweep position. So stretch him out a little bit, boom, 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 boom. Even if he puts this hand down, just hold yourself right there, don't move. Does that look familiar? You might remember it from 10 seconds ago. So again, if I push in this direction, so when the angle comes here, boom. So now if we just rewind, and I put myself back into that equation, that's really all I'm doing, right? I'm basically taking him over that shoulder. So when I stretch him out and I pull, and I knock him down, he has to fall. There's no way for him to keep his balance. So that's really the whole idea 
behind this sweep is that table principle. And uh, I think it's important to understand the direction that you're going to sweep somebody. A lot of times people will set these grips up, but then they're, they're putting pressure in the wrong angle, and the guy's never going to fall down. And they don't figure out why it doesn't work. you got to make sure if you chop off one of the guy's arms, you've got to push him in that direction. Otherwise, he's going to use his other arm or his other, his other legs to base. So I can hear what the viewers of this are thinking. And they're going, I, I know some people are going to be dubious about feeding that hand between the legs. And I know I was dubious mm. when I first started seeing techniques like that as well, until I started, they started working for me. So how many times have you hit this in training? And how many times have you hit this? Have, yeah. you, have you hit it in competition? Definitely in competition. Um, in training, I mean, I can't even count the number of times that I've done it. Um, I mean, every single day, I, I, I'm, I'm doing this sweep all the time to all kinds of people to, to you know, of course, like I'm going to do it to a white belt or a blue belt, but also to the, my, my higher level training partners going to do it to them too. And people who know what I'm trying to do is still effective. So it's not as, it's not as easy for me to resist. It's like, don't let my hand go between my legs. Because once I'm there, I'm hooped. That's right. Once you're there, I'm really just going to follow you around until I'm able to knock you over. And I, I, I understand the, the, what you just said, you know, it, it, how are you going to get the highest hand between his legs? But it's much more effective than it might appear to be. I'm also using this in competition too, at, at the black belt level. You know, I'm using this. And I'm not the only one. There's other people doing it as well. There's a lot of examples of this. The thing is, you know, when, when, when you're going to pass my guard, you're typically not like this. And then, could you get in the guard, please? Like, lay on your hand. I'm not going to try to pass like this, right? <laughs> What am I going to do? I'm going to, be, I'm going to be here. So part of the work is done for you by someone's low stance. Mm -hmm. So all you got to do is just get this arm around. And, you, know, you know, there it is. It's easier than you might think. Also, too, let's say I was going to pass. Okay? I need to get a grip on you. I'm going to grab here. I'm going to grab here. So, you know, you know where my hands are going to be. It's not like it's a surprise. I, I'm not going to try to pass your guard like this. Mm -hmm. And if I tried, it wouldn't work. You know, I'm definitely going to engage. So if I'm like this, well, that grip's easy to get. When you sit up, okay, I usually don't try to run away. I try to stop you. So again, that hand is right there. So there it is. And now I'm, it's, it's going to be a battle to get it free and to maintain my balance. So I definitely get the question. And I'm going to say that I even thought it was unlikely when I first saw that position. The same way I thought spider guard was unlikely. The same way I thought omoplata was unlikely. I can remember as a, as a, as a, as a young blue belt, even purple belt, my coach showing me spider guard, omoplata, or not me, but the whole class. And the, 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 my coach was, are there any questions? And yeah, Brandon, what's your question? I don't think it's going to work. Well, what do you, what do you mean you don't think it's going to work? Well, I, I don't think you can do that to me. And my coach, okay, well, let's try. And then, of course, he would put me in spider guard and dump me or put me on the plots and I would try to get away and he would submit me. So I get that it, 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 it looks maybe unusual, but it's actually a very, very, very uh, predictable series of events that can happen and a very dependable strategy. So people should try it before throwing it out of their game entirely. Please try it. And again... Okay, I'm one person saying to do it, but there's a lot of people. You don't have to just take my word for it. I hope that you would since you purchased this, this instructional. However, you, th there's lots of other evidence that this is a highly effective technique at all levels. Perfect.